In this chapter we will discuss how the bonding in molecular compounds is different from the bonding in ionic compounds, and how the electrons affect the shape of molecules. The bonds that holds the atoms together in hydrogen gas are not ionic bonds, but covalent bonds. Atoms can combine by sharing electrons to form a molecule, joined by a covalent bond. For example, oxygen gas is a diatomic molecule composed of two atoms of oxygen. And a molecular formula is a chemical formula of a molecular compound. The molecular formula of water tells us that each water molecule contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Below are a couple of representations for the ammonia molecule. The structural formula shows the covalent bonds and the arrangement of atoms in a molecule. In the ball and stick model, the atoms are represented by balls and the bonds with sticks. When comparing the characteristics of molecular and ionic compounds we notice several important differences. If you look at a collection of water molecules, the molecules act as single units. Sodium chloride is an ionic compound, the ions in its formula unit do no act as a unit. An ionic bond involves the transfer of electrons between atoms, while a covalent bond involves sharing of electrons between atoms. Molecular compounds usually have lower melting and boiling points than ionic compounds. Many molecular compounds are gases or liquids at room temperature, while ionic compounds are mostly solids. All elements in a group have the same valence electrons. The chemical properties of an element are largely determined by the number of valence electrons. The electron dot structure is a diagram that shows the element with valence electrons as dots. Atoms like to have their orbitals completely filled with electrons. That's why noble gases are very stable. With the exception of helium, the general rule for noble gases is having eight valence electrons, which lead to the octet rule. The octet rule states that in a chemical reaction, atoms gain or lose electrons to acquire the electron configuration of a noble gas. Hydrogen gas share one pair of electrons forming a single covalent bond. Water has two single covalent bonds as shown below. Sometimes atoms share two or three pairs of electrons to reach a noble gas configuration. Carbon dioxide has two double covalent bonds, while the diatomic molecule nitrogen has a triple covalent bond. There is another covalent bond that is different from the bonds in water or ammonia and nitrogen. It's a coordinate covalent bond. Carbon monoxide gas are held together by this type of bond. The carbon atom needs to gain four electrons to reach a noble gas configuration. The oxygen atom needs two electrons. The two atoms can share two pairs of electrons to form a double covalent bond, so oxygen is stable but carbon not yet. To solve the problem, oxygen can donate one of its unshared pairs of electrons to form a third bond as shown. This is a coordinate covalent bond, in which one atom supplies both bonding electrons. For some molecules and ions it's impossible to draw structures that satisfy the octet rule. For example, the octet rule does not work for molecules whose total number of valence electrons is an odd number, nitrogen dioxide is an example. There are molecules with atoms that reduce the octet to less than 8, like boron trifluoride. And there are molecules with atoms that expand the octet to more than 8, phosphorus pentachloride is an example. When two atoms combine to form a bond, energy is released. The product is more stable, meaning that it is in a lower energy status, than the reactants. To break the bond, you need to supply energy, and this is called the bond dissociation energy. In the table below, bond dissociation energies and bond lengths are shown for some covalent bonds. You will notice that as the bond dissociation energy increases, the bond length decreases. There are different bonding theories for covalent bonds. The quantum mechanical model of bonding describes that atomic orbitals of two atoms overlap to produce a molecular orbital. The molecular orbital has a different shape and applies to the entire molecule. A molecular orbital that can be occupied by two electrons of a covalent bond is called a bonding orbital. 
the molecular orbital shape indicates a high probability of finding the electrons between the two nuclei, as shown in the figure below. To predict the three-dimensional shapes of molecules, the VSEPR, which stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion, theory can be used, which states that the repulsion between electron pairs causes molecular shapes that allow for the greatest distance between valence electron pairs. In the figure below, five common molecular shapes are shown. Carbon dioxide has a linear shape, but there are more complex shapes as well, like methane, which has a tetrahedral shape. In methane, the angle between the CH bonds is 109.5 degrees. Ammonia has a pyramidal shape. The angle between the covalent bonds is reduced to 107 degrees, because the unshared electron pair of the nitrogen atom strongly repels the bonding pairs, pushing the bonding pairs together. A water molecule has a bent shape. The oxygen atom in water has two unshared electron pairs and as a result the angle between the covalent bonds is reduced to 104.5 degrees. The VSEPR theory works well to explain molecular shapes, but it doesn't help in describing the types of bonds. Orbital hybridization provides info about both molecular bonding and molecular shape. In hybridization, different atomic orbitals mix to form the same total number of equivalent hybrid orbitals. Let's have a look to the methane molecule and the electron configuration of the carbon atom. The carbon atom's outer electron configuration is 2s2, 2p2, so there are only two unpaired electrons. However, in a methane molecule, a carbon atom binds to four hydrogen atoms. How can these two extra bonds form? The 2s orbital and the 3 2p orbitals are mixed to form four identical sp3 hybrid orbitals, as shown in the figure below. The pair of electrons in a covalent bond are pulled between the nuclei of the atoms that share the electrons. A covalent bond between two atoms that share, or pull, the electrons equally is called a nonpolar bond. This happens when the bonded atoms are identical, like hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. A polar bond is a covalent bond between two atoms that pull the electrons unequally, it's kind of an electron tug of war. The ability of an atom to attract electrons is quantified by its electronegativity value. Consider hydrogen chloride, the electronegativity of hydrogen and chlorine are 2.1 and 3.0, respectively. Consequently, the pulling forces on the bonding electrons are not equal. Therefore, the covalent bond in hydrogen chloride is a polar bond, the chlorine atom will have a small partial negative charge and the hydrogen atom has a partial positive charge. That's why hydrogen chloride is a dipole, which is a molecule that has two electrically charged ends called poles. The electronegativity difference between two atoms reveals what kind of bond is likely to form. Look at the table below. A nonpolar covalent bond will probably occur if the difference in electronegativity is zero, or let's say less than 0.4. Polar covalent bonds occur if the difference in electronegativity is between 0.4 and 2. If the difference in electronegativity is greater than 2, an ionic bond will form. Some molecules that have polar bonds are not polar. The effect of polar bonds on the polarity of an entire molecule also depends on the shape of the molecule and the orientation of the polar bonds. Water is a polar molecule because of the bent shape. Adding the bond dipole moment vectors results in a net dipole moment that is greater than zero. Carbon dioxide has two polar bonds, however, carbon dioxide has a linear shape, so their bond polarities cancel because the bonds are oriented in the opposite directions. Adding the bond dipole moment vectors results in a zero net value for the molecule. Therefore, carbon dioxide is a nonpolar molecule, even though it has polar bonds. Molecules can be attracted to each other by a variety of different forces. These forces are weaker than ionic bonds and covalent bonds, however, intermolecular attractions are important. These forces are responsible for determining whether a molecular compound is a gas, liquid or solid at a given temperature. Van der Waals forces are the weakest of the intermolecular attractions, 
These are dipole interactions and dispersion forces. Dipole interactions are forces that result from the attraction of oppositely charged regions of polar molecules. Dipole interactions are similar to ionic bonds, but are much weaker than ionic bonds. Dispersion forces are caused by the electron motion in one molecule affecting the motion of the electrons in another molecule. A greater number of electrons allows for stronger dispersion forces. That's why bromine is a liquid at room temperature and fluorine is a gas. In water, there is an attractive force between the partially positively charged hydrogen atom and the unshared electron pair of the oxygen atom. This interaction is a hydrogen bond, which is a special case of dipole interactions. Hydrogen is the only element with valence electrons that are not shielded from the nucleus by other electrons. Hydrogen bonds are the strongest of the intermolecular forces.